Hey guys, what's up? I'm Bianca. Welcome to my channel. It's been a weird few weeks and I've kind of been uploading twice a week, kind of been uploading once a week. Um, for you, for all of those who don't know, I upload every Sunday and every Wednesday. I don't know, just things have come up and I'm a little lackluster in the uh, persistence department. <laughs> Whatever, I'm trying my best and I guess that's all that matters. So... This might be a little weird of a video, um, I am gonna read something to you, but it's not gonna be my traditional spoken word videos where I do like a pretty cinematography and all that stuff. I just kind of want to talk to you and read it to you and yeah. But before we get on with this video, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe down below, and follow me over on Instagram and let's just get right into it. I don't know, I don't even know what I'm gonna title this, but I guess it's a little odd that I'm going to be reading one of my essays or one of my stories from the past. Um, and it's about a boy. It's not about Jordan, but I love this story so much. And I always, not that I always think about it, it's not the memory of it. It's just, it was a really good story and I liked the way that I put it together. So this is the first time I'm reading it in a long time. Obviously I still write every day and I still do things, but it's fun to get to share it with people that could either give you feedback or just some sort of validation that it's like cool because I don't really share because I don't really share stories and stuff with people anyway um, so share with you guys without further ado let's just get on to my story and I hope you like it and let's just have a good little story time They're not like traditional story times but so you know when you were a kid, I'm just throwing my laptop, you know when you were a kid and like in kindergarten and it was reading time so the teacher would, you know, you gather on the carpet and the teacher reads you stories, like that's kind of what I want to do with this, um, or at least somewhat of a series or segment of this, so if you like that, again, like this video and comment down below if that's something that you're interested in or whatever, let's just get on with it because I'm just rambling and rambling and rambling. We were like the innocent but much more adventurous Bonnie and Clyde. We would meet up when nobody was around to pester us on what we were doing or more specifically where we were going. He hated when people would try to get inside his brain but oddly he let me in and I didn't even have to knock first. The night was young and my mom felt younger. I had met up with her outside of a club a few minutes before I set out on one of my greatest adventures. I started walking up 8th Avenue as if it were leading me to the great and powerful Oz. There he was, smoking a cigarette alongside the 23rd Street Diner with a bunch of his Alcoholics Anonymous buddies. He looked cute. I liked when he wore his button-up rolled up just about three quarters up his arm to show his beautifully done gray and black tattoos. I liked how he didn't kiss me hello. Somehow it made things less complicated. He flicked his cigarette but onto the curb, and we walked to the diner to join the rest of his friends. He was energetic, polite, and had the tendency to talk extremely fast, as anybody with ADHD in a past like his would. He ordered a Belgian waffle with strawberries, bananas, and maple syrup. I wasn't sure what I liked more, him or the fact that he ordered breakfast anywhere he went. He always wore a gold Nixon that was given to him by his psychotic ex-girlfriend. I didn't mind that he still wore a piece of her. After all, the watch was really nice. Once we left the diner, we stood on the corner, taking up more space than a halal cart. His friends started becoming obnoxious and I began to grow irritated. I gave him a look. He knew the look too well and within seconds we parted our way to the uptown C train. He lugged his red and black bike over the turnstile and we continued talking about either casting spells or eating cereal. I couldn't begin to name some of the things we talked about. We talked a mile a minute and everything and anything our mouths could flap out. I never spoke too much, like the other boys would recall I'd do. We walked onto the train and I still didn't know where we were headed, but the look in his eyes gave me a thrill so I didn't ask any questions. We got off at 59th Street, Columbus Circle. He chained up his bike, his baby, and we crossed the street to some hotel I forgot the name of. 
We skipped in like guests, and as soon as we stood together on the escalator, he started rambling fast things like, so, where are we from? California, New Jersey. No, Jersey's lame. We're not lame. What about Europe? Uh, Connecticut? Maybe. Whatever. Let's just think touristy. We were soon prancing around the lobby, making our way to the bar and pool area. For some reason, he kept telling the older businesswoman and men that it was my birthday and how I really wanted to play some pool. I don't know how to play pool. My face instantly became red. <sighs> my face instantly became redder than my bedroom walls as the drunken woman started singing happy birthday to me. I told him to make them stop because as much as I liked attention, it was getting to my head. Literally. My heart was racing and I didn't know which sentence to say, so I grabbed his hand and we scattered into the next room. The next room looked like something out of The Godfather. It was dimly lit with vines growing out of the ceiling, the walls, and if I can remember correctly, the floors. There were iron couches with deep colored cushions, metal chairs, and small little tables underneath big bowls of chips. Of course we ate all the chips. For all, anyone knew. We were just guests at the hotel. We sat, talked, and absorbed the room for a few minutes until he had to go outside for a cigarette. He was a chain smoker. I hate nothing more than cigarette smoke, but with him, I didn't mind. We went out on the terrace and suddenly I was in a different world. Vines groped the doors and beautifully curved iron castings created a design along the edge. We were overlooking our entire city, but I couldn't keep my eyes off him. I remember wanting to take his picture, but being too chicken shit to ask if I could. I wish I did. I wish other people could see how sweet a bad boy looks when you're a few stories up and a few cigarettes in. Yo, know, I was getting like weirdly nervous reading because it reminds me of in school when you have to uh, <laughs> you have to read to the class and the teacher calls on you and you're like, oh my god, I'm gonna fumble, I'm gonna mess up. But I fumbled a few times, but don't worry, I'll just jump cut it. <laughs> hope you enjoyed my story and I guess I hope you know why I read it because it's fun and I love writing things like that. I love writing stories like that and I kind of want to get back into it and I only really ever wrote stories and essays like that when the teachers would ask so instead of I guess maybe doing short poems or short stories maybe I'll try to write a little more essays or try to tell a story instead of just a feeling um because it's fun and I like that stuff without any further ado if you like this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe down below and follow me over on instagram and I'll see you in the next video bye